Hi, I'm Pablo Ingercher, uh, one of the producers of Mariposa with Mariano Contreras, Fiona Pitalú y Martín Cuinat. Hola, mi nombre es Javier de Pietro, formo parte del elenco de Mariposa de Marco Berger, eh, junto con Aileen Salas, Julián Infantino, Malena Villa, Justo Calabria y Gran Elenco. Ok, soy Marco Berger, soy el director del film. Y este es un film sobre el amor. Y el amor está dividido en dos realidades. Así que juego con el butterfly effect. Y puedes ver dos mix de una historia, una historia de amor muy crazy. No lo sé. Espero que te guste. Me gustaría enjoyar. You already said that you were asked in the in the screenings how you came up with the idea. Well, how did you come up with the idea? Was it that you actually had two stories in mind and then thought I combined them? Uh, no, actually, the idea came from. It was really difficult to me to study cinema, and it was a point in my life when I, I really was doubting about like should I study cinema because everything uh, appears to be like no. I applied to two schools. And they reject me, so it was very hard. I say like, okay, I don't have to be a director. And then I follow my dream. I continue. I made Plan B, and after Plan B, my first film it was so big and so amazing that I thought that day that I, I, I made this choice. So with this idea of like a little detail that could change everything, I make this idea with the butterfly and the two stories. And. Yeah, why I pick like two, uh, these two boys and girls, you never know, it's like you start writing, you have, I had this idea with the baby, like the mother giving, uh, giving the baby or staying with the baby and then growing up in a family or growing up with this guy like a friend and then I developed the script. When you start writing like the whole, it's coming when you write, for me at least, I don't have like a, a structure from the beginning. I just write, and then I go to the end, and it's one script, mm. and that's it. Well, you already said the, the stories are quite similar, the two universes, but they're not the same. But there's parallels. I don't know if that was intended, but to me, it, I have the feeling that some things are sort of like destiny, that they were bound to happen, no matter in which universe you are. Yeah, actually, it's destiny is... Uh, I don't know, Destiny maybe is the story of the brother and the sister and the buff butterfly come to change maybe this destiny. Uh, but it, what is very similar in both is like, doesn't matter the circumstances, the love is the same. You are the same person, you are the same essence. If you are in one universe, maybe you could be like more shy or more dark. But you love the same person, you go through the same path, the same places. Of course, it's a game in the script. I don't say, I'm not, I'm not saying like, if actually could this happen, could be like this, because it's impossible, because actually the game of the film is working all the, all the time with the cutting. But yes, I think the essence is the same and the destiny is maybe not the same. Mm -hmm. I don't want to, to say it. But, so love is something universal? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's something universal. And I think, uh, yeah, it's this game with parallel universe and it could be with past and present or with different life. It's like, okay, like these uh, movies with reincarnation when you love someone and the end you die and you're born again and you love the same. It's like, the game is, is something like uh, bigger than universe. So it, it's, that's why it's happening both sides. Mm -hmm. And the butterfly, it changes the path of history in this movie, but at the same time I had the feeling that it sort of symbolizes those two worlds because of what a butterfly looks like. You have two sides that look yeah. sort of the same, but they are not exactly the same. Yeah. Actually, the, the, the butterfly effect or the, the cow theory, theory say that you could change in the past and make like a new uh, universe. But like in all the stories, like in Back to the Future, you always wonder what happened with the other path, what happened with the other story. So this is a movie about, okay, the, the two stories are together and they go like in parallel. So actually there is two universe. But the butterfly, like this image of the butterfly, I think it's, it was a coincidence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, 
I have to say, I found it challenging to watch the movie, and that made it very interesting as well, because in the beginning you really have to understand, first of all, what is going on. And so my question for you, when, when he came to you with this idea, what did you think? Did you immediately think, yeah, that's a great idea, I want to produce this movie? I loved the idea for the very, for the very beginning. In fact, Mariposa was um, thought first than Ausente. Yes. But uh, at the same time, after Plan B, we needed another step, another, um, an, a, another movie before starting with that idea that we loved, but we said, all right, we need uh, to more financing or to have the Inca support that we needed one step more and Ausente was exactly the, the, the perfect movie in the middle. Mm -hmm. And yes, I loved uh, Mariposa, I loved the fairy tale, I loved that, uh, that story between, uh, be between a guy and, and, and a girl but having a subtle gay story in the middle, yes, and always is the, <laughs> yeah, and always it's uh, Marcos look. Uh, yes, mm. of course, we were there from the very beginning with my three partners, of course, I'm not the only <laughs> producer, I have to say. <laughs> well, the gay story in the movie appears as something extremely normal. It is not shown as something different, something extraordinary. That was thus intended, I guess. Yeah, I, I really like to, to play with that because my three fir fir first films, they were like really, tension of the gay situation and in this film when two guys meet they kiss like immediately so it was really funny to 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 play with that uh, but by but it's important the, the gay story even it's not the most important story in the movie it's it's important and play with the realities and play like the the character of bruno he's in one side he's like going to be really open and gay and the other side is going to be always like inside of the closet so even if the essence like being gay is the same it changed it depends the circumstance also mm -hmm. well you have already been in the movie before in absence Just how, in absent. Um, how was it how did you get into this project was it already clear for you that you wanted to continue to work with Marco ¿Cómo llegaste a este proyecto si vos querías trabajar conmigo? Si querías seguir trabajando conmigo. Sí, yo, eh, bueno, obviamente, eh, después de la experiencia ausente con, con Marco tuvimos una relación más cercana, de hecho somos amigos, eh, y este proyecto me llegó ya sabiendo que existía y me, me convocó Marco para, para que sea el personaje y la verdad que fue un honor porque primero que es un amigo y segundo fue la persona que que me hizo debutar en el cine y que me enseñó muchísimas cosas eh, de, de este mundo. Así que fue todo un placer. I tried to translate. He <laughs> said he he was uh, happy to be in this project before because he was in absent and it's true after absent we became very close friends so he knew about the script. He knew everything. He didn't know from the early beginning he was going to be in the part, but when he, he, he knew he was going to the part, he was really happy because he knew the script and the story and everything I did. And, and he's a great guy and he's my friend. <laughs> <laughs> um, something about the aesthetics of the movie. I'm not sure if I, if I saw it right, but you used filters for one of the stories, didn't you? No, I no? just colored it after ah, shooting it. Okay. Yes. We use all the clothes in one universe and art in one universe, like going like in purple, uh, blue, uh, green, and the other universe more like in red, yellow, pink, and brown. So it was different in the clothes, in the art, in the, yeah, in everything. In the hairdo? In the? The hairdo of the people? Uh, not the hair. Actually, only Malena, she had like and the green. Beard. But no, no color, no. no not the color, uh, but in one... The he has ah, yeah, the style, yes. Yeah. I thought you were talking about oh, the no, colors. No, the, the style in general, I mean. Ah, OK, uh, sorry. That's, uh, yes. Uh, the, the point is, is that it was going to be very different because it's the only thing like the, the audience can understand in which place they are. So if you see the film, for example, when he's, he's like this, in that story, he cannot change. Mm -hmm. He cannot shave because if he shave, it's going to be very confusing because you, you can mix everything. So the point was to make very different styles. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
I had the feeling that some of the aesthetic effects were already in your former movies and that you used them again. For example, in Absent and also in Plan B, I had the feeling that you showed man as objects of desire. Yes. Yeah, so and that this happened here again. Yeah. I really, like work, I really like to work with this, with tension, with uh, like uh, homoerotic in a way, but also I really like to work with my own work. If you see in Absent and Hawaii and Mar Butterfly, always the characters look at the others and you have something in the eye, the three, in the three films. Mm -hmm. So I really like to work with this or this, the, 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 the way I shoot the people like when they're in bed, like I'm the same angle. I like to, to yeah, to play with my own work could be kind of uh, strange, but I really like. If you see Absent, for example, in the beginning is a, a little portrait with a butterfly, a blue butterfly. Okay. So the first film is Butterfly. So in The Watch, my first film is also the same portrait with the same butterfly. So it's something I really like to work with. And of course, homoerotic. And here uh, I try to mix also with the woman as a as a point of desire because Eileen Salas, she's amazing, she's sexy, she's have this strange face, and I think she she become uh, an object of desire as the guys in all my films. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's the right answer. I don't know if there are right and wrong answers. <laughs> okay. Um, but I had the feeling you do not only play with your movies, but you also play with what the what the audience is used to see. Yes. That was what I found very interesting in all of your movies, that that is sort of, well, not the opposite, but that you're showing something that has not been seen before. Yeah. Or not that often. Thank you very much. I try to do my best. I don't know. I, as a director, I, of course, want to do something new, something like uh, to put the people in a strange place. I think the most psychological film is absent, because all the time you think it's going to happen one thing and happen another thing. But in Butterfly, it's not, maybe it's not happening this. Maybe you could think where it's going, but the, the, the script is developing and developing and growing and growing. So in one moment, it's, it's happening things like you never imagined. And I really like that. Mm -hmm. because, because maybe you can see uh, a film and maybe it's very good and you know where it's going. And I think in Butterfly, from the early beginning, you is like, where am I going with this? Because it's so strange, but I like. Mm -hmm. I like I like I like the audience, so I always like to work and to feel. When they say I work with tension, is I work with tension in films, but actually I work with the tension of the spectator because the spectator is like, come on, or ah, what's going to happen or something. So they are tense, and if they are tense, you communicate because they want to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well. I don't want to talk too much about the end, but I... No, of course, please. But I do have a <laughs> no, question no, no, about... An, 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 <laughs> a very abstract one. Um, do we have to under... Well, is there a solution to the end? I mean, is there, is there one way to understand it? Or would no, you say you can understand the, the, the way you want. Of course, as any film, I don't think I can, uh, the, the, the answers belong to the director. You can think whatever you want. You can think parallel world, you can think dream, you can think everything. For me, it's parallel world. It's, of course, two different destiny. It depends on which reality. But I'm not close to say, this is going to be like I thought it. No. You can see the world. You can see the film. You can enjoy it. If I think some people understand everything as I wanted from the beginning. And some people maybe have to see the film two times because it's so uh, small parts. It's like a very big puzzle you have to put the parts to understand maybe but uh, no i'm not very i'm very open with all my films to think whatever you want like it's your movie you sit there it's yours and you take whatever you think you need to understand in absent a lot of people think that the professor was in love with the boy other people think just he understood it was a boy that loved him and it's not gay but just understand that and it's like, they ask me, it's, it's like, as you want, I don't know. That's the film. But uh, 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 it's, not, it's not coming with destruction. So you, you, you can be free to understand whatever you want. Even I think it's kind of clear, but <laughs> I don't want to push. Yeah. Um, the movie already premiered? Yes. How was it? How did the audience react? Uh, you can tell. Uh, 
Well, for me, I, I, like for me, it was uh, the, the biggest applause I heard here in, in Berlinale was in our, in, in our premiere, but of course, it's, surprise, it's like right? one of being one of the daddies of the, of the baby, yes. I, I think people enjoyed, people was uh, constructing the puzzle. Even me, I discovered myself telling to Marco on, on the last screen, hey, and that character which got <laughs> That answer is that, ah, that's true. I am still discovering things. It's a movie to see more than once. ¿Y vos cómo viste el estreno? Que tu primera vez. Muy, 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 muy bien. Eh, fue un, es muy cálido y aparte caminando por, por, por la Berlinale y por, por la ciudad mucha gente se acerca a decir que la película me gustó. Que fue muy lindo. Ah, I didn't know that. <laughs> he, said, he said it was really warm and really beautiful. I think the same. I think it was really big. And he said some people come to him, because he's the actor, of course, to, to tell uh, they really like the film. So I'm very happy <laughs> for the information now. <laughs> yeah, I'm really happy. I'm really happy. I think uh, I'm, I am a, a very... I, I was really, really lucky with the audience, always. Maybe not sometimes with the critics and the... This is very... You never know. I was lucky with the Teddy, of course. But with the audience, I, I was really lucky. Uh, most of the things I, I do, people react and people, yeah, like. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for the interview, and I wish you a lot of fun at the festival. Thank you very much.